I now want to show you a little bit more sophisticated system tests or acceptance tests. Now tests that are part of my system test project. So as I um, told you before, I have a specific separate project here, system test for the coffee shop that will verify my application from the outside. And again, the reason why this resides in a separate project is that I don't accidentally reuse code from a, um, the production scope that to connect to my application, for example, to map the JSON responses and things like that. Why? Because I really want to make sure that the contracts are being met and that I don't accidentally change something in the production code that is also then being used for the system test and then both changes matches. And then although I change the contract, I don't see this because, well, I reuse always the same classes. So what I do, I want to separate these things here. I have a specific system test project that can use any technology that I like. I could, for example, use bash scripts or Python if I want to use this HTTP um, client lookup. But in this case, I also use Java because I'm a Java developer and that's the most um, efficient for me. And I have a create order test, um, a test that now resides in my system test project. And that will now do a very similar thing to my uh, smoke tests, but of course, much, much more as well. For example, to create a new coffee order. As I showed you before, this is a way to efficiently um, write this by separating well how your test scenario will be executed from the actual lower level execution how it is executed so for example how is an order being created well i will have to do some json stuff and some http stuff but that is not um, important on this level here so this will be outsourced to this a component what I call coffee order system and this is just plain Java this is just a class that I can instantiate and then use all of this JAXRS logic or whatever technology you would like to have and in the same way now it's a little bit more interesting if I have my barista because what actually is running here is the barista is the backend where I communicate with and two things are interesting first of all this communication doesn't happen synchronously it happens in an asynchronous way. So if I create some coffee order, it will be uh, reflected to the database and it will be persisted. And then at some point later on, the coffee shop application, application will call the barista backend. So with some scheduled job, for example, or some event. And now I want to verify that this, verific that this communication works as expected, that the contracts are being met. And of course, I need to, well, mock and control this somehow. So what I do locally here, I run wire mock and this is where um, containers actually help me also locally where I can just simply swap the barista the actual barista application to this wire mock to this mock server application where I then can actually connect to the mock and then control it as expected so we saw this test scenario before now let's have a little bit more sophisticated test scenarios because once we create a coffee order then the status will be updated asynchronously so that means we have an order in the system and then at some point my applications will communicate with each other and then I see this change being reflected. And in order to make this happen, what we need to do, we need to tell the barista system, very similar to a mock on a code level, now please answer in the following way because we expect some communication to happen soon. And now in order to make this a little bit more maintainable, again, because this is actually a lot of more complex uh, logic going on here, we outsource this logic how to answer how to do the mocking again into a separate component what i now call barista system and what i do here you see this uses a wire mock so it will connect to um, this um, other application and then configure and set up some basic um, mocking behavior of this wire mock here how it will work and then i say oh please now answer for the following order in the following way that means we expect some HTTP call to happen somewhat in the near future. And then if you get this for this very identification of the order, please only for that order um, respond in that specific way. For example, with a specific status, such as preparing or after preparing, it will be completed and things like that. And then what we do in my test, I will make sure that this happens and I see in my coffee order system now, well, whether the um, orders in the system with the correct data. And then what I want to do, I need to wait until now this communication between the two systems happen. And well, actually the best thing I can do here because it's asynchronous is to just wait, 
wait with a timeout until I expect it to happen, depending on what I actually do and depending on, on how quickly the event or that invocation will happen. And then once that is the case, once I find the match request, once it happened, then please continue and then say, okay, then it should be finished, for example, or uh, collected a different status. So I can test the status transition. And then, for example, in another way, I can um, answer here again. And then I see the status ping pong going on between my systems and I can verify whether this is the case. And again, in order to make this more maintainable, I have the readable code here, the actual test scenario, what I want to test, and then the lower level implementation in the other component. And this is now how we can actually verify uh, this on a code level. So let's run this test as well. And we now run the scenario that not only creates and verifies a test order, but, um, but also verifies the communication between the coffee shop and the barista system. So now you saw that the second test actually takes a little bit longer, but that is not the fault of the test technology. That is actually part of the use case because my coffee shop application, since that is asynchronous, will take some time. There's some internal polling going on until it sends uh, this communication to the barista system. And now that is a way how to mark and control the behavior um, also of a second application or of a second microservice that is part of my system here and to make sure that all of that works. And now also the point is since I separate the life cycle of the test from the life cycle of the test environment, I can, what we'll see later on, reuse these test scenarios to, for example, swap out the barista mock against the actual barista and test this as well. Because the, this test scope that I just fired up tests my application under test, the coffee shop here, and all of the other components are mocked away. Well, actually I reused the correct database, but I could swap that out to an embedded database as well. And this is an environment that verifies this system test. But also I could use um, the correct barista, the actual application, then I will just create a lot of coffee and but use the same test scenarios that just verify the acceptance criteria of my use cases. And this is the important part. I want to verify the contracts, whether my application works um, as expected and whether all of the communication between the other microservices involved is correct. And then what I do here on my system test level, I use some code quality techniques, I craft some proper abstractions with some reusable components where I can very clearly write down my test scenarios, what I actually want to test and verify that this is being met on um, the application level. And this is how I can set up also a little bit more sophisticated system tests that involve multiple systems and test that, for example, locally if I want. So you saw this is a very fast feedback. I can have um, a quick change uh, being reflected locally in my coffee shop application, for example, and I just re-execute uh, my system tests that within a very few seconds give me the correct response whether this change works or not including all the correct contracts. So I don't run any simulated environment. Uh, here I run the actual production um, like image, uh, for example, and then just swap something out um, on the code level and verify it um, in this end-to-end -end black box behavior.